Marcus Zambo, uh, respected Dashi President, Registrar, professors and dear students. I am Chaya Nangidoma and I will be your storyteller today. Now, the Performing Arts Club presents to you Rabindranath Tagore's The Post Office. This 110-year-old story is set in contemporary rural Bengal and the post office is one of Tagore's most beloved and renowned dramatic work that continues to play a special place in Tagore's reputation within Bengal and the rest of the world. The story concerns a child named Amal, who is confined to his uncle Madhav's house due to an incurable disease. Now, we, all of us can relate to being confined because of the constant lockdowns and quarantines that we've experienced. Amal stands in his uncle Madhav's courtyard and he talks to passerby and asks them about the places they go. And um, the construction of a new post office nearby prompts the imaginative Amal to fantasize about receiving a letter from the king or being the king's postman. The village headman, Panchanan, mocks Amal and says that the illiterate child has received a letter from the king announcing that his royal physician will come to attend him. However, the royal physician does come with a herald to announce the imminent arrival of the king. But we shall see if Amal gets to be graced by the presence of the king. Now, I'd like to invite on stage the spectacular cast for tonight's performance. First, we have Amal, the protagonist of the play. <laughs> Amal is um, a young village orphan and he's new in town, and he's adopted by his distant uncle and aunt. He is innocent and naive and is rich in imagination, and he wants to travel the world and see all there is to see, which makes him being confined in the house even more painful. Next, we have Madhav, a practical businessman. He is Amal's adoptive father and also Amal, Amal's foil. Madhav has grown to love Amal so much that he does not care if Amal spends all of his money. Gaffer is an acquaintance of Madhav and at Madhav's request, he promises not to excite Amal or let the boy to play outside. Then we have the doctor. The doctor cares for Amal and orders his confinement and also quotes the scripture. The card seller. The card seller is one of the townspeople who befriends Amal. He tells Amal of his village and teaches the boy how to sing the song that he uses to sell his card. The watchman. Is one of the passerby whom Amal speaks with, although the watchman tries to frighten Amal by threatening him to arrest him, Amal thinks that it would be a great adventure. Sudha. <coughs> is also one of the townspeople whom Amal befriends. She picks flowers and makes them into garlands that her father can sell. Although she'd like to talk to Amal, but she must go and do her work. Two young boys. They are children who pass by Amal's window. The boys invite him to play with them, to which Amal says that he cannot. The Herald. The Herald is the one to announce the arrival of the king and also the royal physician's presence. The royal physician. The royal physician is likely the more, tal more talented than the town doctor and he immediately contradicts the doctor's orders demanding that the rooms be opened up and the fresh air be let in. And finally we have the headman Panchanan. <laughs> headman Panchanan is the town bully akin to the modern version of a mob boss. Everyone in the town is afraid of him. Well then, let the play begin. This play is presented in two acts. Act 1. The doctor says that the boy cannot go outside or he will get worse. 
Madhav, who is very fond of his new son Amal, makes his friend Gaffar promise to not let him outside. But then Amal questions the doctor's orders. And while Madhav says that the doctor knows best because he's educated and is well read, Ma Amal concedes that he must not know anything because he is not educated. To this, Madhav proposes that Amal should sit still and read his whole life. But Amal scoffs at this suggestion because he does not want to sit still. Instead, he wants to travel the world and see all there is to see. <coughs> what a state I am in. Before he came, nothing mattered. I felt so free. But now that he has come, goodness knows from where my heart is filled with his dear self. And my home will be no home to me when he leaves. Doctor, do you think he... If there is life in his fate, then he will live long. But according to what the medical scriptures say, it seems... Great heaven! What? The medical scriptures have it. By not causing cold in the gut or spring on life. Oh, don't fling your scriptures at me. You only make me more anxious. Tell me what I can do. I already told you. The boy needs the most scrupulous care. That's true. But tell me how. <coughs> Under no conditions must she be let out of the doors. Poor child. It's very hard to keep him indoors all day long. What else can you do? For they both ought to son and the dad were both very, very bad for the little fellow. For the scriptures have it, in wheezing, so in nervous fit, or in leaden or jaundiced eyes. Never mind the scriptures, please. Ah, uh, then we must shut the poor thing up. <coughs> Is there no other method? Not at all. Uh, I must be going now. Doctor says that it's bad for you to be out. 
How can a doctor know? What a thing to say. The doctor can't know, and he reads such huge books. <coughs> ah, I'm so stupid. I don't read books. Now think of it. Very, very learned people are all like you. They are never out of doors. Aren't they? Really? How can they? Early and late, they talk and nod at the books. They have eyes for nothing else. Now listen, my little boy, you are going to be learned when you grow up. And then people will notice you and say, he is a wonder. No, uncle, I never want to be learned. I won't. Dear, dear, it would have been my saving if I could have been learned. No, I would rather go about and see everything that there is. Listen to that. See? What will you see? What is there so much to see? See that far away view from where we look? Sometimes I often long to go beyond and right away. Oh, you silly. As if there's nothing more to be done, but just get off the top of that hill and away. Ah, you don't talk sense, my boy. <coughs> now listen. Since that hill stands there a brother as a barrier, it means that you can't get beyond it. Else, what must you use? Keeping up so many last stones to make such a big affair of it. Ah, uh, do you think it is meant to prevent your crossing over? It seems to me because God can't speak. It visits its friends into the sky and be gone. But I suppose the learned people. No! They are not crazy like you. Do you know? Yesterday I met someone quite crazy as I am. Gracious me! Really? How so? He has a bamboo staff on his shoulder with a button at the top and a brass pot on his left hand. He was making out for those media over there. I stopped him and I asked, Uncle, where are you going? He answered, anywhere. Again I asked, Uncle, why are you going? He said, to see gold. Uncle, have you to see gold? Of course I have to. There's many about looking for jobs. How lovely, then I should go further, finding things to do. Suppose you see and don't find that, will you that be jolly? I watched that old man slowly walking on with his old pair of torn shoes. <coughs> he stopped where the water flows under a thick tree. He took out the grain part from the bag, moistened it with water, and began to eat. I said, Auntie, I want to eat my grain cloth just like him. And uh, what did your auntie say to that? And she said, get to a cross, and she would take me. See, Uncle, when shall I get to it won't be long, my dear. Really? Then I should go right away. I'm going again. And where will you go? Oh, I will walk on, crossing so many streams, wading through the waters. Everybody will be asleep with their doors shut in the heat of the day. And I will tramp on and on, walking sick, far away. I see. I think you'd rather be getting well first, then. But then you won't want me to be learned, will you, Uncle? And what would you rather be then? I can't think of anything just now. I'll tell you later on. <coughs> Very well then. But mind you, you are to look out and talk to strangers again. But I love to talk to strangers. Someone is laughing at you. That's a good thing. And you will take me away. You all give me. I'm off my box. But darling, you won't go out, will you? No. But you will let me be in this room by the roadside.
How wonderful! Aren't the cattle grazing in our village? Indeed, they are. And your women with Jerry Saris fill their pitchers from the river and carrying them on their head. Good, that's right. Women from our dairy village do come down and fetch their water from the river. <coughs> but it isn't all the women who own a red sari, Sir John. But surely, my child, you must have been there for a walk sometimes. No, never. But when I'm well, you'll be the first person to take me to your village. I will, with pleasure. And you will teach me how to guide girls, shoulder the yoke, and walk long, long roads. Dear, dear, <coughs> do you ever. Why should you sell curls? No, you will read big books <coughs> and be learned. Ah, no, I don't want to be done. I'll be like you. Take my curls from the village, down the road, near the banyan tree, and I'll walk it from cottage to cottage. Dear child, will you have some curls? But I have no money. Oh, no, no. Don't talk about money. You'll make me very happy uh, if you have a little curl for me. They haven't to be long. Oh, not a bit. It has not been a loss to me at all. You have taught me how to be happy selling curds. Curds! Curds! Good night, curds! <laughs> Here's the one you want to know. Hey, Wasp, you come and have a word with me. Wasp, all this row you are making up. Aren't you afraid of the likes of me? No, why should I be? Support my watch of death. Where? But the doctor won't let me out. Suppose I march straight to the king. To the king? Will you? But the doctor won't let me out. Doctor won't let you. Poor fellow. So I see your face is fair, and there are dark rings around your eyes. Your bean sticks up from your both in hand. <laughs> Say, Wasmi, won't you sound the gong? Time has not yet come. How do you mean? Some say his time has not come. Some say his time has gone by. But surely your time will come when you strike the gong? That's not possible. I start off the gong only when it is time. Yes, I love to hear your gong. Tell me why does your gong sound? My gong sounds to tell the people that time works for now, but goes on forever. Where? To what land? That none knows. <coughs> then I suppose no one knows anything about it. I do wish to try with the time with that time that no one knows anything. All of us have to get there one day, my child. Have I too? Yes, you too. But the doctor won't let me out. <laughs> one fine day, the doctor himself will take you there by the hand. If you don't know him, he only gives me in. One day after that, he comes and let us free. Oh, when will this great doctor come? I can't sit here any longer. She didn't talk like that, my child. See, what's, what's going on in that big house over there? Where there is a flag flying high up and people going in and out. Oh dear, that's our new post office. Post office? Who's? Who's? Why? <laughs> the king, surely. To let her come to the king's <coughs> office here? Of course. I'll find it. There may be a letter for you there. A letter for me? But I'm only a little boy. The king sends his tiny notes to little boys. Ah. How do you guess you'll write it to me? Otherwise, why do you send up this new post office? Right in front of the open window with golden flag flying. But who will send me my letter when it comes? The king has many post friends. Don't you see that? Round about with round big batches on their chest. Well, where do they go? <coughs> oh, from door to door, all through the country. Uh, I'll be the king's postman when I go up. <laughs> postman? Indeed, rain or shine. Reach or poor. From house to house, delivering the letter. That's very good work. That's what I like the best. What makes you smile, sir? Ah, your work is great too. This is the village headman. I must go off now. If he catches me boasting with you, then there will be a great to do. Headman? Where is he? Right down the road there. See that huge farm with umbrella hopping along. That's him. <laughs> then I suppose King made him a headman here. Yeah? Made him? Oh no. A fussy busybody. He knew so many ways of making himself unpleasant that everybody is afraid of him. I must get off now. <coughs> Mustn't keep walk waiting, you know. I'll go to Adam tomorrow morning and tell you all the news of the town. It would be splendid to have a letter from the king. I will read that by the king. Ah, but I can't read writing. Who will read it to me? Until you read Ramayana, she will read it to me. If not, I will keep it safe with me and read it when I'm gone, grown up. <coughs> hey, man! Hey, head man, may I go have a word with you? Yelling at me. Hey, man, don't yell! <laughs> oh, you wretched monkey! Well, <laughs> hey, man, everybody minds you. Oh, yes, they do. Do the king's postman listen to you? They do. Will you 
tell them it's Amal who sits by the window here. Yeah? Why? In case if there is a letter for me. A letter for you? But who's going to write to you? Yes, the king does. Ha! The king! <coughs> oh, you are his good friend. You haven't made, met him for a long time. Wait till tomorrow. You'll have your letter delivered to your house. <laughs> <laughs> Say, my friend, why do you speak in that tone of voice? Are you cross? Cross indeed. You write to the king. I'll deliver your letter to your house tomorrow. Wait. No, don't bother yourself about it. <laughs> Why not? I'll tell the king about you. One of his footmen will bring you news for you. अभी बाकी है मेरे दोस्त एक्ट टू माधव सेज दैट अमाल लुक्स वीक फ्रॉम स्पेंडिंग ऑल डे बाय द विंडो बी फ्रेंडिंग मोस्ट ऑफ द टाउन्स पीपल नाउ द डॉक्टर इज वर्ड एंड सेज दैट अमाल कैन नॉट सिट बाय द विंडो एनी मोर अमाल प्रोटेस्ट बिकॉज द फकीर अ होली मिस्टिकल मैन इज कमिंग टू सी हिम
No, I would rather go to his gate and cry, Victory to all the king! Dancing on turbo sound. Won't it be nice? It will be splendid. <coughs> and if you meet me, I shall ask for my fortune. But what will you ask for, my child? I shall see. Make me a postman so that I will deliver your message from door to door. <coughs> what is there to be said, my child? Even though you can stay at home, it isn't said. First, when they shut me here, I felt like the day is quite long. And since there is a post office outside, I don't mind being indoors. And soon I shall have a letter. I'm happy. <coughs> I wonder what will be in the letter. Even if you didn't make out, wouldn't it be not just for your name? <coughs> Do you have any idea of the trouble you are calling me into? Between you two, what's the matter? I'm here. Send here a legit rumor that the king has set up an office to send messages to both of you. Well, <laughs> what about it? The head friend Panjanan has left the king anonymously. Aren't we aware that everything reaches the king here? Why should you look out? Why take the king's name in vain? You will bring me in ruin if you do so. Say, for you, will the king be cross? Cross? Nonsense! And a child like you, a fakir as I am, let me be angry. Won't I give you peace of my mind, Dad? Say, fakir, I've been feeling a sort of darkness all over my eyes since the early morning. I don't feel like talking. Suppose this room runs away. Suppose let us show to come today, my boy.
guys may be doing the talking to me. Oh, Madam, your son here is expecting a letter from the king. Don't you take any notice of him? A mere foolish boy. Why not? Here's a letter for you from the king, Archin. Archin? Really? It is so forgive. Yes, my dear. I, as for key, can tell. It is his letter. But I can't see anything. It's all blank to me. Say, you see, headman, what's in the letter? Well, the king says, I'm calling on you shortly. You'd better arrange for puff rice offerings for me. Hell, this fare is quite tasteless to me now. <laughs> this is you, headman. Don't you joke about these things. Cutting jokes, indeed. Dare he? Are you out of your mind to govern? <laughs> out of my mind? Then I am. I can plainly say that King Rat, he will come to see Aman himself with the state physician. Shh, forget. He's jumping. Can't you hear? What's that? Who is it? What a father. What is wrong? See, Edmund. Hope they are not robbers. Who is it? This is Pantala and the Heavens. Aren't you afraid of me? <laughs> I guess the noise has ceased. They have smashed the door. <laughs> oh, so what did you do tonight? Oh, my God. And what are the night, Harold? The second watch. Um, but my friend, watchman, the sound is gone ding dong then. Yes, the king sent his very physician to any known strong friends. <laughs> what is this? How close it is here. Open wide, all the doors are ready. How do you feel, my child? <coughs> I feel I'm fully well done. All the things seem to have gone. How fresh and open. I can see all the stars shooting from the other side of the dark. <laughs> Yes, I've been dying for so long. I will get to find me the polar star. Though I may have seen it often, but I can't seem to make sure which is it. <coughs> Tell you everything. Do you go about and any some flowers on the road for the king's visit? And um, we cannot have that person in here. No, let him be. He's a friend. He's the one who brought me the letter. Oh, very well, my child. He's with me. He's a friend of yours. <coughs> Aman, my child, the king loves you. He will come himself. Take a grip from him. You know our circumstances. Don't you worry, uncle. I have already made up my mind. What is it, my child? I shall see leaving his postman so that I will deliver his message from door to door. <laughs> Alas, is that all? You see, uncle, what will be our offerings to the king when he comes? He has come under pop rice. Pop rice? Say again, you said so. You knew all we did, we didn't. Well, if you can send word to your house, I can manage for the king's advent real nice. Morning at all. Now, we are done with you. Slip is coming over here. I'll sit rice below. He's dropping into slumber. Lord to honor. Only let the star rest from him. Hush, he slumbers. <coughs> Why are we standing there like a statue? <laughs> holding your palms? <laughs> I'm nervous. Is it a good omen? Why are we darkening the room? How will stand like hell? Silence, unbeliever. Amar, he's asleep. Yes, you may. When will he be awake? Directly when the king comes and calls him. Would you whisper a word for me in his ear? What shall I say? Tell him that Siddha has not forgotten him. Let the child sleep in peace. I'll sing a song for him. Mm -hmm. A touch of sweetness in the breeze that softly swings. My song is today a winding stream that gently ripples in its happy course at play. The cuckoo sings in trees and gardens. Coo, 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 